Hi, this is Mike. Uh, today I'm just going to have a little uh, review and description of uh, this, which is a Heinrich. Uh, it's a Gripmaster safety drill press vise. So it is sort of, in some ways, like a uh, footlock vise, and then it can attach to the uh, table, and then the jaws. You know, open up, close, they've got a step in them so you can do uh, flat, you know, like plates, sheets. Um, the big difference is that it uses a, a cam lock type mechanism instead of a crank, which for me was the deciding factor because I just didn't want to have to do the little whole flippy over thing with the crank. So, I ordered this, took it about a month to get here, um, and it's got pluses and minuses. There's some things about it I really love, some things I don't. Um, so let me go over uh, how it works really quick and uh, show you what I like and don't like and uh, what I did to correct that. So um, the main thing is, like I said, it, it uses a cam lock in here. So when you pull this down, it pushes this forward. I don't know, eighth of an inch maybe. So you take, like, say, this little chunk of aluminum, put it in there, lay it in, crank this down, and it's and they're real good um, and these are replaceable they're just you know aluminum no problem they they want like seventy dollars for them which you know if you got a milling machine that's uh, not happening <laughs> there's that um, they will open up really wide that's like 12 and a half inches something like that 13 inches I don't know whatever it is um, they this all slides really nice so these um, one of the nice things with the two bar setup is it just doesn't cock which is great. These are well machined, slides really nice. All this works great. So no complaints there. That's all really good. A um, couple of things though. So when I got this, it, this wasn't tight enough. You could put something in and it just wasn't tight. That was easy. There is a set screw in here. So you take this jaw, or it's actually got a hole in it. You stick a, a hex key in there and you can adjust it, no problem. Um, one thing I don't like is, I don't know if this will up on camera, you can see the actual little bumps of where they tap the thread in there. So that set screw is just too close to the edge. Even a half a millimeter in would have been perfect. And then it would, I mean, and it doesn't affect how it works, it just bothers me. Actually, I should run a file across that and you can feel it. It's not bad, uh, but it's still, it's kind of lame. Um, so. Uh, that's, that's that's disappointing. Um, so the thing I really didn't like was the mounting mechanism. I'll show you. So it came with this piece of 5 8 which is roughly 16 millimeter square stock. And it was attached right here. Um, it's got a, a cap screw that goes through and then a, a, a split roll pin to keep it from moving, which I just reused. Um, so the, and then it would just clamp down to the table with this little piece, which is allows it to slide when it's tightened down, sometimes. So that's a good and a bad thing, right? It's, it's easy to adjust and you can keep it from rotating, but... Um, you know, it, it won't stay, which that's kind of sucky part to me. Um, the bigger problem was where this was mounted on here, this was not parallel to the table, so it had a little, a little uh, lift. So this edge was a little higher than this edge. So when it was in here, on this end it would slide, but when it got down to here, it wouldn't. It just stopped. You had to loosen this up. I mean, it was just lame. And the fact that it wouldn't lock that bothered me. Yeah, I could have m milled a little bit off of here and made it clamp down, but that didn't eliminate the problem of it not being straight. Um, so I decided to do uh, a round bar and uh, a split uh, clamp for it. So this this will tighten down with a, uh, I got a handle, uh, one of these uh, releasable adjustable handles and you know, a washer obviously um, and this, so you can just put this on there it's got a t-nut that goes in there tighten it up 
it doesn't move and it slides really well. So to do that, I uh, took this apart, clamped this down to the mill table so that this was vertical, and then just plunged in with a 5 8 end mill to make this uh, recess, you know, exactly the same radius as the, the bar. And I don't think it'll show on the camera, but it might, but you'll see a little tiny step right there. The reason for that is this is a 16 millimeter bar, which I had left over from another project. Uh, it's uh, like 01 drill rod, so it's it's very smooth, straight, round, and I already had it. And I had a 16 millimeter reamer, <laughs> so that worked out right. So all I did was put it in the lathe and take, I think it's about 5 thousandths of an inch off of here. Um, so, you know, to uh, make this 5 8 so that it fit the radius in here good. Uh, drilled the holes for the cap screw and the pin, put this together, and then I put this, uh, this, was, this was the part that was impressive. So I put this edge on my surface plate right, so that it was down, and that's not the edge I based the machining off of, but I did that and held it down, and I ran a test indicator across here, and I had from, you know, basically here to here, I had just over a thousandth of an inch, like one thousandth, one tenth, something like that, maybe three tenths, I wasn't very much. Um, so it was, it's more than straight enough which is, it works out really well. Um, so then I actually have had some T-nuts. A friend of mine gave me three of these. He got them with something. They wouldn't fit his, any of his machines. And they just happened to fit the table on this uh, Powermatic. So uh, the downside is, of course, that when you loosen this and moved it, the thing moved around. So I put a couple of uh, little uh, 832 set screws in here so you can tighten it down and lock it into the T-slot. So let me show you how it all works put together. So put this guy in here. And I thought about drilling and tapping a hole in the table and I just didn't want to. And you know, because I could just use these set screws and lock the T-nut in, there was just no good reason to do so. So just tighten these up until they hit the bottom of the slot. I had to buy a little bit long. I didn't have any set screws quite long enough. Well, I did, but they didn't leave any threads in the, in the uh, T-nut. So we just snug those up. They don't have to be very tight, right? It's just holding it from moving. Um, and we put our... So this this is a nice German one. Um, Kip, I think is the brand. Kip, K-I-P-P. -P. I don't know. It's funny because it's 3 8 uh, 16 uh, Imperial thread, but it was specified with a, a length of 60 millimeters because, of course, it's German, which is great. <laughs> and I had to cut a little bit off to keep from bottoming out, but uh, not a big deal. So we just stick that in there. I left as much thread as I could to not hit the base. Um, and then this just goes in, right in. Oh, get in there. Uh, I put the blackening on here and I haven't actually tried it since then. So it may, I may have to open that up just a hair. Oh, no, it's partly tight. Uh, it's kind of snug. Uh, I wonder if I got the set screws crooked, because... Yeah. Uh, something changed. That went in real easy before. I haven't tried this since I blackened it. Now, there's no burr on here. Maybe there is. Maybe this is crooked. Let's see. It's pretty straight. It's not straight this way. <laughs> so, that's easy to fix. Loosen that side. And tighten this side a little bit. 
of course it could be just the underside of the T-slot. I tried this before and it worked. Yeah, that looks better. Let's try that. <laughs> now that it's on camera. I actually did shoot video of a lot of the work, but I forgot to turn the microphone on. So, I've got no sound and I'm just not a really a voiceover kind of guy. So, uh, see if that works better. Pardon the air compressor, it's doing its auto blow down thing. Hopefully it won't come on. All right, fingers crossed. Oh yeah, that's much better. So anyway, that just slides on there. You uh, tighten that up and then it's really firm. That was the other thing about this, right? Because this didn't actually clamp the bar. No matter how tight you got this, you could wiggle it quite a bit, which kind of defeats the whole purpose for my mind. Is that it's, you know, it's pretty, I mean, you know, it's, you got a lot of leverage. You can move it, but it's pretty secure. And, uh, it's just easy to move, so, you know, in use, you just put in your, loosen the jaw. <laughs> hey. Put in your part, lock it down, you know, line it up with wherever your drill bit is. Or I put a laser thingy on this a few weeks ago, which I really like. Do that, crank it down, and it's, like I said, you can force it to move. You've got a lot of leverage, but it isn't going to go anywhere. Um, so there's that, anyway. Uh, and then you just, the nice thing is, right, if you're going to change, if you're doing multiples, you don't have to move this. It just keeps it setting, locks right back up, really good. Um, so I wish to come for the price, because these things are not cheap. It's, I don't know, depending on where you order it from, it's anywhere from like 250 to 400 dollars, which seems a little overpriced. 250 is not bad, 400 is. And I looked on the parts sheet, and for this assembly, it's like 40 dollars. Something like that. Thirty-eight dollars for this piece of five-eighths coal rolled, which is just ludicrous. I mean, yeah, oh yeah, it's been you know zinc plated or whatever, but it's not acceptable. Um, I would rather pay you know another fifty bucks and have a proper bar and clamp on it, um, and which couldn't cost much more. Right? This was five, five, ten bucks worth of steel. Yeah, you'd have to make that, but they're already making this. It wouldn't be that big a deal to, you know, ream a hole in it and split it. it yeah, it's one more hole. No, it's not even another hole. It's just instead of a square, square, this is milled out, right? So you still, it's not much difference in machining operations. So I, I, I definitely list that as a uh, fail on that. So next, the only other issue is where that thread is on the bottom. Um, it's just too close to the edge. It, it doesn't hurt anything. It works fine. And I'm going to get, you know, many years of use out of this. Nice thing is, right, I can put it over here, swing it out of the way for a lot of the things I, I need to do. This won't be in the way. And if it is in the way, you, know, you just loosen it, take it off, you're done. Put it back, easy. You might even make a, you know, some kind of hook on the side. I just haven't got that far yet. I just thought of that now, but yeah, it's, you know, once, once this is in the right place, right, we just tighten it up and it's all good. So, and oh, it looks like my T-nut moved a little bit. No, that's not the T-nut, that's just the uh, bolt and the threads. So, anyway, that's all I got. Um, thanks for watching. Y'all have a good day. Stay safe. Be nice to each other. All that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, this is, uh, I really like this. It's going to get a lot of use over the years, and it's actually already gotten some use. Um, you know, the biggest deal was was just making this and, and machining that for the bar, which if you have a milling machine, it's super easy, as long as you have a cutter that's the right diameter. And you could use a different size, but since that was all ready, uh, that says, oh, one thing I did do on that, um, because the square bar was pretty much flush with the bottom, 
is I went in uh, a depth of 3 16ths of an inch, 187 thousandths from that so that I would have, show you here, so that right we would have some space on the bottom of the uh, clamping bar. And it ended up, I went from where the bar was instead of this face, which is, was a mistake. Um, so it ended up 20 thousandths over. So this is 187 to this from here plus 20 thousandths. So this ended up, instead of one inch, it was one inch 080. Not a big deal. Um, and then I just offset that to match. So that was the other thing I did with the, with the surface plate and the indicator is I measured the, measured the height so that I got this right. And, um, machined this to exactly that thickness. Within it turned within a couple of tenths, so like I said, it, uh, it slides really good on there. No, no issues at all once it's in the T slot straight. Uh, so that's all. Um, again, have a good one, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to y'all later. See ya.